Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, Y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I really hope all of you guys had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. I just wanna give you guys a shout out real quick. Shout out to all my moms out there. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, literally. <sighs> now today's video, this is a brand new fresh case. I actually had a totally different video planned for you guys today. This has happened before. We've had this conversation before. Edited, everything ready for you guys, but y'all have been in my emails, my DMs, my comment sections of everything requesting that I talk about this. So I just said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Now there's not a lot out about this case right now. I'm gonna fill you guys in on everything. Gonna show you guys some videos, some pictures and stuff like that. So just bear with me through this. As the case continues to develop and the suspect that is in custody goes to court and more information is released, I'll make another video if I need to, okay? But this has just got my mommy heart just boom, 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 boom. So let's just start at the beginning. 13-year-old Tristan Bailey, who went to Patriot Oaks Academy in St. John's, Florida, was reported missing by her family on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So Sunday morning is Mother's Day, you guys. Now I want you to imagine mom waking up on Sunday Dad maybe is making breakfast, whatever. I don't know what happened. I'm just envisioning this, right? You go to your daughter's room, knock on the door because she's not up yet, 10 a.m. And she's not in there. She's nowhere to be found. You're freaking out. Like, where's my baby girl at? My 13-year-old little baby girl. She reports her missing. Now, in this community, the community that they lived in, there's no no crime hardly at all. This is a neighborhood that does not see a lot of police activity or say? crime. Definitely no kidnapping or murders. Or any, it's a very, the community that they live in is very tight knit, very well to do community. The pictures and the videos that I saw looked very upper middle class. I mean, upper, like much nicer neighborhood than I live in. I'm not expecting anything. She reports her, her daughter missing. Now, the whole entire community gets involved at this point. I mean, neighbors are talking. Investigators would later say that they were so impressed by the community. I mean, they were making flyers immediately, phone calls. I mean, everybody was involved within a quickness. I mean, this is how they rolled in this community. Out walking, the dogs are looking for this baby girl. Friends is calling friends, calling people from the school. She was a cheerleader, calling cheerleading coaches and all of her little cheerleading friends. I mean, they're looking for this baby girl on Sunday. Now, after a 16 hour search, her body was found. One of the neighbors that was out on just like a regular old jog who just happened to be, you know, the, know that they were looking for a little girl. He was out jogging in his normal path and decided to, you know, maybe take a couple little extra turns or whatever just to look while he was out jogging, saw a little girl's body in this like wooded bushy area that was over by this lake in their town. He called the police. The police came out and they saw that this little girl's body, she had been stabbed. And the investigators would later say, they're not going to say right now how many times she had been stabbed, but it was numerous and it was horrendous. By 20 years of investigating homicides, this is probably uh, one of the most tragic and, uh, and difficult cases that we have faced. They take her body in, they call the parents to come down there to identify her, to see if that was her, and then her family identified, yes, this was her body. So how did this little 13-year-old baby girl's body end up in this wooded area, stabbed multiple times? They did say she was fully dressed, so there is no suspicion of any kind of assaults or anything like that. 
So the community, again, they're all completely involved, okay? They're looking at security footage and, you know, everybody's checking their ring doorbells. So while everybody's checking their cameras, surveillance footage actually caught Kristen Bailey at 1.15 a.m. So she must have snuck out the house. I don't know, we're gonna find that out later. But at 1.15 a.m., walking through the parking lot of an amenity center that they had there in their area, with one of her classmates who was a 14 year old little boy named Aiden. So they're walking, okay, catches them on there. Different security camera footage catches them walking through a neighborhood and into this wooded area. Now, three hours later, camera footage shows the little boy Aiden walking out of that wooded area by himself, okay? So the police see this on the foot, you know, people are calling in, telling them, okay, we've got her on the security camera, da 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 da. They go to the little boy Aiden's house, okay? They put him in the car for questioning. This little boy takes his cell phone and posts this picture right here from the back of the cop car talking about anybody, you know, has anybody seen Tristan? Because they was taking him in for questioning. But when they searched his bedroom, they found clothing with little Tristan's blood on it. Now, they spent days searching that lake over there. They're not saying what they're searching for. Then it's a big lake. I think they said they were searching two lakes, but definitely that lake. I mean, they had divers, the whole thing. And my assumption, I don't know, is that they're searching it for the murder weapon, the knife, because they've got a suspect, right? And they've got baby girl's body. She's fully clothed. Why else would they be searching that lake? That's my personal opinion, but of course they're not t telling a lot of the case right now because it's still under investigation. So now the little boy is in juvenile detention center down there in St. John, and he just had a court hearing via, via Zoom. And I'm surprised that they actually showed it because he's a minor. So that makes me wonder if they're gonna show more about this case. Nevertheless, the judge said that there was probable cause to keep the little boy in there and he's going to be in there until the end of May for sure, 21 days until they can, you know, get the case going. Now, since then, different investigators on the case have spoken out and one of them ha who has been in the field and has been in that community as a crime investigator and has been in there for like decades said that he feels very confident about this case. How good is the case right now? I would say, uh, based on my experience, which is quite extensive, uh, I am very confident that this case will be prosecute, prosecuted to the fullest. It's a very strong evidence in this case. I'm not going to get into specifics, but uh, I'm very confident. That they have the right person in custody, meaning the 14-year-old little boy that he stabbed his classmate friend, left her in the woods, whatever, and that he's completely confident and they have an overwhelming amount of evidence. So we know that they found his clothes that has her blood on it, allegedly, but overwhelming amount of evidence. Now, this is when things get quite crazy. The internet's been going wild. Y'all have sent me so much stuff, my darn head is spinning. People are making TikToks about this. There are tons of, especially teenagers that I've seen. And if my teenager babies are watching this, I love you guys. No shame to you, but I, I gotta just tell you, I'm reporting it as I'm seeing it, okay? Especially teenagers making videos that said that they went to school with them or whatever and that he wasn't the only one involved. That there was, his other friends were involved and that there's rumors going around that she was ard assaulted in that way, but the police have said no. And a matter of fact, they had to release a statement separating fact from fiction. And as you guys can see right here, the fiction part is that she was assaulted in that way. But the fact is that that picture that he took in the back of the cop car while he was ta being taken down for questioning and then later arrested, that is true. He literally, he posted that on Snapchat. You guys, when I tell you the things that people are saying about this baby girl online, and it's a bunch of kids. It is, it's got to be a bunch of kids. There's no way that I can believe in my heart that grown, grown behind adults are spending their time doing this. That a bunch of like little teenagers and stuff, I mean, are saying all kinds of stuff like free Aiden, free the little boy. She probably deserved it. Like all kinds of horrendous things that I won't even say. You know, sexualizing this baby girl who has now lost her life. And I saw some comments left by people that said things to the lines of, is that what I got to do is, is get a body, meaning kill somebody, so I can get famous? I'm aware of uh, uh, several social media posts and uh, 
our investigators are reviewing those, investigating those when it's appropriate. But I would say that's just kids being kids at this point. It's, it's nothing to do with our investigation. We're sticking to the facts and the evidence and not the noise and the chatter that occurs on social media. These kids have no idea the magnitude of their words and, and the things they post. And uh, it's frankly reprehensible. So there are actually the mentality of some of these teenagers that think, I want to do this to get fame. How can I go viral? It's all about going viral nowadays, even down to the point of wanting to get in on, on a murder or murdering somebody or doing something crazy in order to get vi to go viral. You guys, the school, first of all, the school that they went to, I couldn't, I looked up on it as a very good school. I know that very good school. I could not tell if it was a private school or not. I really looked for it, could not find that, but I did find that it's a great school. Like they have, a, they're like the top 5% that school is, and it's pre-K to eighth grade. So it goes all the way up till right before high school and they went to a really good school lived in a really great community and all of the questions now are why why did this little boy if he did it but as we speak right now I can just tell you that the man is a cold-blooded killer and I hate to say man he's a, he's a child but he's he committed a man's crime and with that being said of course I, I just feel like um, he's being held responsible for the crime he committed so again we'll build that case with school records a lot of this stuff of course will come through court orders, search warrants, and uh, talking to people that know our suspect. Innocent until proven guilty. Why did he do this? And this is one of those cases where there are no winners. You know, it's not like you found some old creeper and you're like, yep, we got him off the street. It's a 14 year old little boy. Why? Why would you do that and just walk home casually? Like what is going on in the mentality of of this child. I mean, is this a is this another Paris Bennett situation where you have a child who just wants to hurt people? And I've seen kids like that before too. Y'all need to walk, look at the warning signs in your children, okay? I'm not saying my kids are perfect. My kids got their little ways. But if your kids are doing any kind of weird like like pay attention to that. They might need some help, just saying. And then or is this a little boy that, you know, some, like what happened? What happened? And God bless this little girl and the family, the family. As a mom, you go and knock on your baby girl's. Tristan, open the door. She's gone. Now, I, I, I want to know what happened in this case. Like, did she sneak out? Obviously, her parents were not letting her walk around the neighborhood with some boy at 1.15 in the morning. She snuck out? Like, what happened? It reminds me a lot of the Skylar Niece case. You know, the sneaking out like kids. Like, my baby's watching this. Please, listen to your parents. <sighs> so, that's where we are with this case. It's very emotional. It just happened on Sunday. 13-year-old little baby girl. Snuck out of her window with a 14-year-old little boy, walked into the woods and never walked out. And now the little boy is arrested and we're going to be, I guess, waiting for trial to find out what happened. So the community has really rallied around the family, though. I mean, they have put flowers everywhere. They've had memorial services. They've had candlelight gatherings and are really just trying to honor this little girl right now. And, uh, my heart goes out to him. So that is me tell, talking to you guys about this case. Again, especially like parents, please talk to your children. Please, you know, talk to them. Talk to them about why you don't want them sneaking out. Why there's a curfew. Why you have Life360 on their phones. Why you have alarm systems on their window. That way if they open their window in the middle of the night, it's going to light the whole entire house up. Like talk to your babies about this. Like, we can't go back and change the past, but we can hopefully try to use these as lessons as going forward. You know, no parent thinks that their friends are going to be the one that hurts them. As a parent, we're always looking at the adults like creepy, you know, is this person, who's this stranger, who's, who's this family member? But you don't think it's going to be their little 7th, 8th grade friend from school. Their A plus top 5% school you know what I mean? Like, so there it is. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching this video. I will keep you guys updated. If you want to see any of the links that I grab my sources from, I will leave them linked down in the description box. As always, my loves, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. 
And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.